Some youngsters may be headed back to school a bit pudgier. Research shows children put on a lot of weight over the summer months. Deborah Ferguson looks at some of the reasons why. Uh, I know you've been doing your Elvis impersonation. Nah, no, 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 no. No, I just I like listening to them. I love to watch them. I can watch that DVD of the Hawaii concert over and over. It's great, but no, I don't. <laughs> not me. <laughs> well, several workers trying to find six trap miners in Utah have now become victims themselves. Officials say the accident happened after what's called a seismic bump inside the mine. Kate Baldwin has the latest. All right, Ron, well, as we heard at the top of the show, <laughs> some parents call this the most wonderful time of the year. And Deputy Ron Taylor keeping an eye on what's sure to be a busy traffic situation, but we begin with Brooke Sanders. Brooke, good morning. Well, chances are you probably don't go through your cell phone bill too closely each month, but imagine if this landed in your mailbox. That's right, close to 300 pages for your bill. Recovery efforts are also underway in Texas, where they're dealing with what's left from Tropical Storm Aaron. The storm is being blamed for at least four deaths there. Yeah, we have some video from Thailand and the Philippines. The tribute artists put on the satin suits and the pompadour wigs, <laughs> and they belted out hits like Suspicious Mind and Teddy Bear. Well, after a lead scare resulted in millions of toys getting pulled off of store shelves, there's a new product out there to help you protect your children and your grandchildren. The nominations are out for TV's Emmy Awards. As Mark Barger reports, one show stood out from the rest. It will be at least two more weeks before we know if attorneys for a suspect in a Tennessee trooper's murder will win their request for a change of venue. That was Nick Kenny reporting. According to firefighters, at least six other people were treated for heat-related injuries. Five on the Graceland campus. One, an eight-year-old boy, was taken to the hospital. So we're putting humidity back into the mix is what you're telling me. Unfortunately. You're hurting and, my feelings. I know. And, and <laughs> Good morning and welcome to Action News 5 today. It is August 16th, 2007. I'm Ursula Madden and for Kim Clark. We are dealing with record-breaking heat, and it doesn't look like it's going to let up anytime soon. Hopefully, we can get some rain. Ron Childers is standing by in the Pinpoint 5 Storm Tracking Center. Well, right now, Memphis Lake Gas and Water executives are in a meeting. They're scheduled to discuss benefits promised to former utility president Joseph Lee. Right now, President Bush is making a stop in the Volunteer State. He's talking business at the Gaylord Opryland Resort in Nashville. Let's listen in. Compact disc, 25 years old, so it's only three years older than you and I. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> We're both 28, if you believe that. Well, let's find out what's happening on Wall Street today. Hey, I could pass. <laughs> Here's your Bloomberg market update. This afternoon, we have more information about that steam explosion in New York that brought fears of terror back to the Big Apple. NBC's Michelle Franzen has the story. Breaking news at this hour. Just moments ago, Action News 5 just learned former MLGW President Joseph Lee filed a lawsuit against Memphis Light Gas and Water on Tuesday. For that reason, the utility board just decided to table scheduled talks over his benefits that he was awarded for life just a few weeks ago. Action News 5's George Brown has been inside that meeting. He will bring us a live report as soon as it is possible. Another breaking news story this afternoon, the Palestine Wheatley Fire Department in Arkansas confirms that they have sent fire crews to the school there. They could not tell us how bad this fire is at this time. You may remember back in February, uh, the Palestine Wheatley Middle School there, also the gymnasium uh, caught fire in the rear of the gymnasium and burned down. The school was actually closed down for several weeks there. We have crews and chopper five headed to the scene. We're going to bring you new details as soon as we get them. Sunday marks the four-year anniversary of Hurricane Elvis. Who, who can forget that if you were in Shelby County at that time? The summer storm that left more than 300,000 Memphians without power for days. It was July 22, 2003, when winds in excess of 100 miles per hour whipped through Midtown and Downtown, knocking down trees and power lines. On to breaking news, a man is in critical condition at the Med this morning after being shot three times overnight. Police say the man drove himself to the MAPCO station on summer near Holmes. The man was taken from there to the Med where he had to have surgery. Ron, we need a big break from the heat. Well, this morning's top story, the deadly heat wave. The Shelby County Medical Examiner says a 67-year-old tourist in town for last night's candlelight vigil at Graceland died due to excessive heat. That was Action News 5's Joe Birch reporting. Some say the multi-million dollar expansion and improvements proposed at Graceland may bring an even greater police presence to the area, which neighbors hope will drive away street-level drug pushers. Stood in line for hours to buy those Apple iPhones are now getting their first bills. And one woman's first statement was 300 pages long. 
She was so disturbed by the 300-page double-sided small print statement that she created a video that showed her opening the box in which the bill arrived and put it on the internet. Other iPhone customers have received similarly detailed bills from service provider AT&T that list every internet use and text message. AT&T says customers can elect to receive statements online or summary bills. I think I'd be opting for the summary bill. Well, maybe you're more 8-track than iPhone. And later today, the attorney for Deontay Farrell's mother, Deborah Farrell, will file a formal response opposing a petition by Robin Perkins to become administrator of his son's estate. Deontay Farrell was shot to death by a West Memphis police officer who thought the boy had a gun.